Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Terramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Terramina, blogger around the OAA, the host of the last three brain cells and the host of Tween Terramina's on OAA Neighborhood Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on OAA Neighborhood Television. A lot to look at this week here. We're in the final week of the 2023-2024 season. Um, we're going to recap um, this weekend's past games here. Obviously, um, we have one team left in softball and one team left in girls' um, soccer. Um, we got some new coaches in the basketball docket, um, coaches over at Troy Athens and um, Groves. We're going to break those um, those hires down, my thought process on each of the hires there. And also, Jess released the basketball districts um, and the volleyball districts have been Released them. They're on the MHA website. I will have an article posted um, sometime during the week when with the districts. So I'll give you my early insights on those um, on this week's show. So big story here. Obviously, we're going to look at is the um, before we talk basketball, we're going to look at um, the recapping of the um, week here um, of the past weekend here. Um, of course, in baseball, there's no OA teams remaining. Um, Rochester fell 3-2 to Flushing in the um, regional final. Um, and then um, Seaholm falling to Birmingham Brother Rice 4-2 in their regional final. So there are no more baseball teams that remain in the OA that are in the um, postseason right now. So so when you look at the league this year, really nice year for the league. Um, disappointed that um didn't finish off the state championship run um, for an OA team this year. So... You know, so a lot to really um, digest there. Um, girls soccer, Rochester Adams is still in um, after knocking off Troy 1-0 in a really um, in a really good game there um, between the two teams at Stony Creek in the regional final. Um, and then you look at, um, you know, then, of course, you look at last week, um, Heartland winning their region over at Oxford, um, knocked off Lake Orion and Bloomfield Hills. Um, Lake Orion was a dramatic game. Um where that ended up going down the wire in the district semifinal, in the regional semifinal, and then, um, and then um, the game of Bloomfield Hills. I mean, like you know, Heartland. You know, we know the experience they have. So now they're in the state semifinals over there. Um, the Heartland not in the um, OAA. They're in the um, Kensington um, Lakes Activity Association. But you know, but with Adams, you really look at with them. Um, just the way that they've been this year. I mean, they've been really really good. I mean, like, they've had, um, they won the, the Kiss of Death district, which is the, um, usually the district with Utica, um, Utica Eisenhower, um, Utica 4-2, um, Rochester and, um, Stony Creek are in that, di- are in that district. Um, won that, and then they knocked off, um, New Baltimore Anchor Bay, um, and then they knocked off, um, and then they knocked off um, Troy in a really, really good game. Um, went overtime. Um, Got to get credit where credit's due. Um, Adams, they've they found a way this year. They've had they've had a nice year. I mean, you got to give them a lot of credit. Um, basically, with Adams is um, you know you got to give them to everything that's going on. Credit credits due with them. Um, so when I look at Rochester Adams, um, you know they deserve to be here. And they're going to be taking on a Plymouth Salem team who has basically had the same story. I mean, you look at it, um, you know, you look at last year with Stony Creek winning the state championship. Um, Plymouth has had the, um, Salem's had to see um, Plymouth make a deep run. They've seen Plymouth can't make deep runs. Um, now it's their turn. And you look at um, Plymouth Salem. They won their first district, um, I think, since 1985. I got to look at the history here. Um, when I look at Adams, and when I look at Plymouth Salem, um, I think it'll be interesting to see how this one goes. Actually, it was first since 1995. So I apologize if I said 1985. It was 1985 was their first um, regional crown. So when I look at the matchup, and, you know, Plymouth Salem's gone through some gauntlets. They've knocked off Lavo- they knocked off um Lavoni Stevenson in the district final. Went toe to toe with Heartland. Um I mean Plymouth Salem, they're they're good for a reason. They are one of the premier teams in the state and there and there's a reason why they are. Um Adams, they're gonna have to they're gonna have to work. I mean, 
they're going to have to really, really work and prepare for this matchup. And I think, honestly, when you look at the matchup between Adams and on Plymouth Salem, it's going to be a battle of two teams that are driven to see other success. And the reason why I say this is you look at with Adam, I mean, they're both, both Adams and Plymouth Salem are in, um, are in, are in school districts that have seen others succeed within their school district. Um, that's what I'm trying to say here is you look at the success that, you know, with Plymouth Salem, obviously Plymouth and Plymouth Canton, um, with, um, Adams, it's Stony Creek. So now people say, why aren't you putting Rochester in here? Well, Rochester, you look at with Rochester, um, the last two season, the last two post seasons, they've haven't been able to get out of that district, lost in district final. I mean, had everything set up perfectly for them, but just haven't been able to get out of the district. So, we'll see. I mean, like, we'll see. I mean, could next year be Rochester's time? It could be. We'll see. But this is Adams' time. And you look at with Plymouth and Plymouth, with Plymouth, I mean, with Plymouth Salem. I mean, they've had to see Plymouth make deep runs. They haven't seen Plymouth can't make deep runs. So, you really look at it, and this is an opportunity here for both these teams, you know, to get to a state final. Now, what's going to wait them is either going to be Heartland or Grand Haven. And those two teams are going to be meeting Grand Ledge. Um, Adams and um, Plymouth Sam are meeting at Troy. So this is going to be really interesting to see how these two teams match up. And I think it's going to be a heck of a game between those two teams. I really think it's going to be a heck of a game because we'll see what happens. I mean, we're going to truly see what happens in that matchup between two teams that are, um, I'd say, almost nearly similar images, especially with the storylines that both teams are going through. So we'll see what happens in that match. We'll see. We will see. And then let's look at softball. Um, softball, this is going to be, you know, we're in the state quarterfinal round for softball. Um, when you look at the regional, um, kind of, so I kind of expected the, the Waterford Mott regional and the um, Trenton regional to go as as is. I mean, Harper Woods was going to have a really tall order with Carlton Airport, um, and that ended up being the case. Um, and then the Waterford Mott regional, um, Lakeland and no issue with Troy Athens was really surprised at the outcome of that score. Um, and then. How they knocked out Bloomfield Hills. Um, I know the story with Lakeland, especially with the boombox. I was reading an article by Brandon Foss in my hometown life. Um, you know, they used the boombox and, you know, for their dugout. And, you know, if they get them motivated and all that. that That's really interesting. I mean, really creative for in Lakeland's part. Now, Lakeland won their first um, regional title since 2012 which is 12 years. I mean, like, I mean, Lakeland's been a perennial power in the Lakes Valley or in the um, Kensington when they were um, in that league for a long time. And for them to end that regional drought, winning it t first time in 12 years, that says something right there. Really does. Um, Lakeland was really dominant in their, um, in their two, um, in their regional rounds. One, winning against Troy Athens, 15 nothing, which was, I couldn't believe that. I mean, <laughs> and Bloomfield Hills, um, they won that one 8-3. to three. Um, The pitcher did a really nice job shutting down um, Bloomfield Hills. It was coming in with one of the top offenses in the state of Michigan. I mean, their offense was solid. But, you know, and you look at Lakeland, I think, I think the difference in that regional was the league that they play in. You look at Troy Athens. Um, Bloopy Hills was in the white this year. Troy Athens, I think, was in the blue this year. Um, but the competition, and you look at what Lakeland has to play. Lakeland has to go up against teams like South Lion. Of course, they have Ava Bradshaw on that team. Um, then you have South Lion East, who's another perennial power in that conference. Um, Milford's not bad. Um, but still, I mean, you look at Lakeland, the path that they've been through, um, says a lot, but then you look at the path for Troy Athens and 
Bloomfield Hills. I mean, Bloomfield Hills, they went through, um, they won a virtually, I mean, like, it wasn't as strong of a district as I thought it would have been. Um, I was surprised with how um, Clarkson struggled most of the year. I was really surprised when I looked at the record from this year because that's not a vintage Clarkson team when I looked at with them. And I didn't expect them to, you know, and I and I thought Blue Bay Hills would have a tough time with them. I mean, they did. I mean, it was, that was a two nothing game in the district final. But but I knew with Lakeland, just knowing the championship pedigree that that team has. I mean, like you know that when I look at the district, and they had to go through Wall Lake Northern. Wall Lake Northern. Night in the state has a sophomore pitcher who's really good, um, and they went and beat them. It was a, it was a, that was a complete slugfest with them. I mean, just knocking off Wall Lake Northern really gave Lakeland that much confidence. You know, you know, and especially when you look at Lakeland and Wall Lake Northern, the rivalry there, the Battle of Bougie Lake. Um, you know, you really, you got to give credit to what Lakeland has. I mean, Lakeland's got a really good. Um, I think you got a Western Michigan commit on that team. I think you got a, I think you got a Miami of Ohio commit on that team. So, two players are going to the um, Mid American Conference next year, um, making noise for them. Now, Lake Orion. You know, you look at Lake Orion. The Dragons. The Dragons' path has been just absolutely insane. When you look at the Dragons, I mean, like you look at them and say. Okay, you know what I mean? You just, I mean, like, I mean, like, they've been, they've been a team that's played a tough schedule. They've been through the gauntlet all year long. I mean, Coach Joe Terra's team's been through the gauntlet. Um, they got some proven players on that team, a lot of experience on that team. So they've been through the battles. They've been through the wars. And you look at the district, Pat, that team's been through. Um, had to go knock off Rochester to start off. Um, then had to beat Stony Creek and Aaron Flynn. Um, won that one five four, and then they had it played Utica Ford in the um four two in the um regional semis, knocked them off five nothing. Um, and then Macomb Dakota. How do you explain this game went back and forth? I mean that game that regional final went back and forth, and you know you look at it was a game of you know a game of like. I call it a game of attrition because, you know, you look at, you know, Lake Orient struck first, Macomb Dakota hits a two run shot. And then, you know, then Lake Orient and then Lake Orient takes the, um, takes the lead. And then Macomb Dakota hits another two run shot. They're up four, three. And then actually, no, take it back four, two. And then the three run bomb, um, the three run bomb that was, Ultimately, the difference in that game, and then Lake Orion had to hang on, win that one 5-4, getting a measure of revenge for what happened earlier in the year um, when Lake Orion fell 7-5 to Macomb, Dakota during the regular season. This is the second time that the Dragons have knocked off the Cougars in this round. Um, so that tells you something right there. So you look at Lake Orion's path. They've been through Stony Creek and Macomb, Dakota. Both those teams are, are perennial powers. Um, and they've been state ranked all year long. Now, Lake Orion's been ranked 10th in the state. I mean, they've been, they've been up and down. They've been between, like, you know, they've been up and down. So when I look at, when I look at the Dragons, you know, they got proven hitting. They got pitching. Um, defense has been solid all year long. Um, so when I look at the Dragons, this is a team that's basically been through the war. They've been through the gauntlet. They've been through virtually, you know what I mean? Just virtually, you know, they've been, they've been through some wars and this team has been truly battle tested. And you look at the quarterfinals in Division One, and you look at that, and you look at the draws. I mean, you look at, you know, you got Farm Tales Mercy taking on Allen Park, um, which I think that could be a really interesting match. Now, Farm Tales Mercy's got a lot of depth. Um, they got a lot of depth. Um, they're a deep team, and 
I think when you look at that matchup, I think Allen Park could give them a game. But I just don't see at the end how farm how they can knock off Farm with Mercy. I just don't see it. I really don't see it. And then there's Midland and Hudsonville. I mean, Midland uh, winning that district in the north, knocking off Traverse City Central. Game had to be played on Sunday because of weather in the area. Um, Hudsonville, of course, they're a, um, they're, a t- in, they're a team in the um, Ottawa Kent out in the west side of the state and um, Ottawa County. I was there for a wedding on um, the past weekend. So, um, but Hudsonville, they they've been a traditionally good power. I mean, they've been a, they've been a powerhouse. I mean, they knocked off Rockford in the regional final. Um, I think that was in six innings, ten nil. So that should be a really interesting matchup. That should be a really, really interesting matchup. So we'll see how that one goes. Um, but that's the um that's the other side of the region, you know, of the um quarterfinals. And then there is Heartland against Sod Lion. And when I look at that matchup, Ava Bradshaw, we I've talked about, you know, Ava Bradshaw in the Lakeland segment, you know, especially because they're in the Lakes Valley. I've seen all these individual accomplishments from Ava Bradshaw. And I said to myself, okay, you've done really well. She's done really well. She's deserved those awards. But you look at, I know the stats say, you know, she's been vir- virtually unhittable. Well, here's the thing I'm going to say. Sometimes, you know, sometimes you can't believe your own hype. And I'll tell you why. Because... You know, there's going to be days where pitchers, you know, they give, I mean, they give up, um, they're going to be, um, you know, they're going to be very good. They got, they got unhittable stuff. I mean, Bradshaw, I know she's got a really good rise ball. She's got a really good fastball, really good slider, really good curve. Um, she's one of the best pitchers in the state for a reason, but there's going to be days where you don't have your stuff. You don't have your best stuff. And Hitters can get to you, can get to you. I mean, you can give up runs. I mean, I look at South Lion and you know I I see all the all. I mean, like a lot of it with them is because of Bradshaw, because of her pitching. They got some decent hitting. I mean, they got some good hitting. Heartland's a team that can really hit. They can hit, and they got playmakers. They got playmakers. So if they can get Bradshaw's pitch count up, if Bradshaw has a high pitch count in that game, Stop Lions in trouble. Because I don't know if I can trust their bullpen if Bradshaw has a really high amount of pitches. I mean, the key against Stop Lion is, and especially against a pitcher like Ava Bradshaw, you got to get their pitch count up. You got to get them hot. You got to get them up. If you get her pitch count up, you know, then you got to make her feel uncomfortable, which, you know, it can happen. It can happen even even the best of players. And I think that's the danger South Lion has. Now, I don't think South Lion's been tested in the postseason. I don't, I don't think they've been really tested. But it would be really interesting... You know, especially with South Lion, you know, with South Lion, you know what I mean? They're a good team. They're they're there for a reason. They're a good team. I mean, but a lot of that has been on Ava Bradshaw and her ability to stay healthy. And, you know, and it, and it shows. It showed. Um, You know, and the record proves it. South Lion is a different team without Bradshaw. And they know it. And they know it. I mean, you look at when she got hurt, I think it was two years ago. Um, I think it was the, it was an ACL injury she got hurt with. And she had, I mean, South Lion was a completely different team. A completely different team. And you know, and then like, you know, and then I mean like she's had I mean, she's had a great year with South Lion. She's had a really great year. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. In that one between Heartland and South Line. I think that's gonna be a really interesting game. I think gonna be a really interesting game. And then Lake Orion Lakeland, this is where we're gonna preview a lot of. Um when I look at this game on paper, um 
Lake Orion. Battle tested more, I I think. Played in a tougher league, obviously. Um, I think they're going to give Lakeland problems. I really think they're going to give Lakeland problems. I mean, their depth, their depth is a problem. I mean, they, I think they're going to give them problems. Um, Lakeland, I just don't, I think for Lakeland, this is going to be their toughest test since, um, since playing South Lion. Um, I mean, the pathway, I mean, maybe since Wall Lake Northern, um, but, It'll be really interesting to see how this one goes um, over at Marysville. But I think Lake Orion wins this one and goes to Michigan. I, I, I think they do. I really do. Um, on the um, other side, I think South Lion behind Bradshaw beats Heartland. Um, Mercy moves on. And I think, um, and I think, um, I think Hudsonville gets by Midland. And, you know, there's your final four. Um, you know, heading to Michigan State. Um it who knows what'll happen. Who knows? Um could Lake Ori make a run to this to the state final? Absolutely. Can Lake Ori win it all? Yeah, they got a chance. I mean, if there's a team that has to be an upset alert, um, I would have to put South Lion on upset alert because Heartland. Because it's Heartland. Um, and if Bradshaw gets rocked, um, if she gets rocked, South Lions in trouble. So if there's a team in the, in the quarterfinal round in softball that has to be an upset alert, it's gotta be South Lion. It has to be South Lion. I mean, I don't see how Allen Park knocks off Archville's Mercy. I don't see how Hudsonville, you know, Midland and Hudsonville could go either way. Um, Lake Orion, Lakeland, I think Lake Orion, um, I think the Dragons um, have a little bit more depth than than the Eagles do. And then Heartland and South Lion. Um, I think the Lions have to be on opposite alert. I just think, though. So. We'll see how that one goes. We'll see. So, we'll see how that one goes. Okay, now we're going to go from previewing baseball, softball, uh, uh, girls' soccer and uh, softball to... Um, some basketball news. Um, obviously, the um, the big stories here. Um, basketball coaches have been named um, over at um, Troy Athens and Groves. Um, I'm going to start with Troy Athens. Um, they named um, Mitchell Fresenio as their new head coach. Um, he takes over for Dave Scott. Um, Fresenio was the assistant under Scott um, and also the um, JV coach under... Um, under Scott when he was um and he did, and he's done a heck of and he did a heck of a job with both both areas. I mean like he did a really good job with both of them. And you know, and I really like the decision that Athens went going in house with their hire. I mean, I think it's a great decision for them to go um with in house and there's a couple reasons why I say this because one, you know, it keeps, you know, I mean, it, it, it's a, it's a coach that's familiar with the players. Um, I think it's a, um, you know, I think for them, I mean, they, a lot of them, they played for Versinio, um, so they know what he wants. Um, Troy Athens has been a team that's been known to scrap a lot and they've been a three point and they've been a three point happy team, obviously. Um, that's why I call Troy Athens the three point happies. Um, because they do shoot a lot of threes and they do make them. They do return some very key players. I mean, you look at Nathan Piggott, um, Liam Dempsey, Nate Appledorn, Brennan Tucker, and Alex Abouillian. Um, And they went 14-9 and last season. Three of those losses for Troy Athens were to tr arch rival Troy. So, kind of, and two of those were to Lake Orient. So, out of those, out of those nine losses, five of them were to two teams. And, you know, and I think that's going to be interesting to see how that one goes. You know, how, um, how Virginia brings to the table. Troy Athens, they're going to be, they lost some, they lost some talent, but the sub RC programs there are strong. Um, you look at, of course, their freshman class was not bad. Their JV class was not bad. Um, 
But they're going to be in a division where, you know, you got to deal with Troy. You got Harper Woods, Seaholm, um, Oxford, Lake Orion, Farmington, and Oak Park. Um, so that's going to be the challenge for um, the Red Hawks. And you look at the division they're in, it's going to be a... It's going to be a battle in that division. It's going to really be a battle where I see Troy Athens. Um, I think with them, it's going to come down to is can the Red Hawks, um, is can the Red Hawks find a way, um, you know, to, I think it'll be competitive, but it'll be really interesting to see how, Troy Athens, um, really, I mean, how they compete in this division. I think it's going to be interesting to see how they compete. Now, in the postseason, Troy Athens has a chance here. I think they do. I mean, with the district just being released, um, as we were filming, um, they're in a district with Troy, um, Royal Oak, Berkeley, and Warren Mott, um, that this district looks very winnable. That district looks very, very winnable. And the only disadvantage that I have with that district being at Royal Oak is where they're going to probably put the visiting students. Now, it's a short drive for Troy. It's a short drive for Berkeley. Um, I don't know about Warren Mott. Um... But Troy Athens is somewhat manageable. Just got to get on. Just got to get on the crooks. You know what I mean, and then make that left to Lexington Boulevard. So it'll be interesting to see how. You know, it's a good district for for Shano in his first year. It's gonna be a really good district for him. Just got to get by Troy. Um, Berkeley lost a lot of talent. Royal Oak. Royal Oak is like, I would say the Rodney Dangerfield of that division because. Of that district for a couple reasons. Royal Oak, they, they tend to start strong, but the but then when they when the um, calendar year turns, I don't know what's going on with them, and they tend to struggle. So that's something for Coach Aaron Smith got to fix. If um, you know, but for Troy Athens, that district looks very winnable. It really does. Um. So, I love the Versino hire. Stays in house, keeps everything in house, and for Troy, for Troy Athens, you know, I don't think they have to change anything. I'd be shocked if they have to. Um, but I think honestly, when I look at Troy, um, when I look at Troy Athens, I think they're gonna make some noise. I really think that they're gonna be a team that they're going to be a team where I think could, they could make some noise come postseason time. I don't know if I see them making noise within the league. I mean, I'd be shocked if they do, but I think in the postseason, I think they're going to be really dangerous. Now, there's some question marks with Troy Athens. I mean, they lost a lot of talent, as I mentioned. So... But a lot of these kids know Virginia very, very well. Um, I think he's going to do a really good job over there at Troy Athens. I mean, the familiarity is there. Um, he knows everybody there. Um, just keeping, keeping it in-house makes the most sense for this team. And I think for them, it's going to come down to is Ken, you know, is Ken, how can they pick things up real quickly? And is there going to be like a transition period? You know what I mean? Because usually when you look at transition periods, it has to happen during the season. So, you know, so there has to be a transition period. It doesn't matter how familiar you are with the coach, but it has to happen during the season. So that's going to be something to really, really watch for um, going forward. So, We'll see what happens. I mean, we're going to see what happens here. Um, I think it's a great hire that they made to um, promote um, Versano to be the head coach. Um, you know, I don't really see much changing with Troy Athens um, when it comes to um, the play, when it comes to the style they want to run. 
I really don't see a lot of changes when it comes to that. So, like I said, it's a great hire um, for Troy Athens. I like the hire. I think they're going to do very, very well. But I don't. Th- I don't know about the division, especially because the division's really tough. But I think at the end of the day, here it's going to come down to is can the division? I mean, like can Troy Athens compete? In the division, that's the big time question mark I have for them um, going forward with Troy Athens. So now let's go from Troy Athens. Let's go to Groves. Um, when I look at the Groves hire, um, they named um, Jessica Dubla, the new head coach, um, takes over for Coach Allison Heidi. Of course, Heidi stepped down at Groves. He's the new head coach at Livonia Stevenson. Um, you know, when I look at this. Um, when I look, at, of course, Dubla, um, she um, was the JV coach at Lakeland for a time. She coached at OCC for three years, played her college ball in New York City, um, played internationally um, in Spain, Poland, and France. Um, so when I, and Dubla's the third coach at Groves in five years over there. So <laughs> it'll be really interesting. This is, uh, this is what I'm going to be really interested with. Is how will she, you know, how will she like, um, you know, I don't know if she's had a meeting with the players yet. I don't know if she's had a, um, you know, she's seen her new team play. Um, you know, when you look at, when you have a coach who knows, who's been through the wars, who's been as a player, um, coached, um, coached, um, high school basketball, um, you're gonna say like you're gonna say okay, I mean we got ourselves we got ourselves a, a proven winner here. Now, you know when you look at Groves, you know you look at what she's walking herself into here. I mean under Heidi, um, Groves went twenty five and forty four in her three years there. Um, the last time when I mean, Groves had a lot of success, um. Under Coach Antoine Simpkins, and when they won their um district title three years ago, but we know what happened there. So with Heidi taking over that program, they did struggle. They went twenty five and forty four, um, in the three years there. Now a lot of that, you know, grows was in the red, and we know that division is brutal on anybody. When you're looking at teams like West Bloomfield, you're looking at teams like Clarkston, Lake Orion, Stony Creek, Rochester, that's not a fun division having to deal with those teams. So girls went down to the white last year. They were better. They were better. I mean they went eight and um they went eight and fourteen last year. They fell they fell um you know 47 35 um, in the district semifinal at Royal Oak. Um, when you look at Groves, and, you know, last season, what, they had a young team. Two years ago, they had a veteran team. When you look at a player like Caitlin Sanders, um, they had Sierra Rocco on that team as well. Um, and Rocco played well last year. Um, but when you look at Groves, um, they did have a emerging freshman who had a monster year in Harlem Simpson. So there are some pieces to work with for um, for Dubla to take over. There is some pieces. You know, you look at a player like like Simpson. You look at J.C. Roy. I mean, J.C. Roy, she is she is a player I've been high on for two years now. She's a good player. She's a really talented player. You put her alongside Simpson, that's a good um, formidable backcourt. That, that's a good formal backcourt. The question I have for Dubla is going to be, can she build program strength? Can she build um, depth? I mean, interior is going to be a question mark. And then particularly because you're going to be in a division with C. Holmes has got a lot coming back. You got you got um, Royal Oak, who's got about a lot coming back, but they are a well-oiled machine. Coach Brian Zapata. You look at 
Rochester, who comes down from the white, you know, comes down from the red, returns, and they return. You got Kylie Robinson. You got Alice Max. Lucy Cook could be an interesting player. Um, they got question of guards. They still do. And they got a new coach in there. Um, and then you have Bloomfield Hills. I mean, then you have, you have Bloomfield Hills. I mean, they lost a lot of talent from last year, and they're still looking for a new coach. And then there's Troy, who I think is going to be probably the most scariest team in that division because of who they got back. When you look at players like Diamond Prince, Reagan Zider, Carly Higabottom, Ali Matuza, Sophia Kakasis, um, Kelsey Block, um, and that's not saying Macy Zider yet. Troy's got a lot of depth. They're going to probably go, this could be a team where I think could go maybe at least 10, 11 deep. They could do that this year. They could seriously do that. That's how good Troy is. That's how good they can be. The question I have for Troy is going to be, is can they handle, it's the mental mindset. It's up here. Because last season, I felt, honestly, Troy had a great chance to win that district. They had a great chance. But they lost that heartbreaker to Bloomfield Hills. So I'm curious to see what Coach Guzman has um, with Troy. I mean, but I think when I look at the division that Groves is going to be in, you got to look at, you have to look at with them. Um, you got to look at with, with them. As Troy, I mean, like, with Groves, where do they fit in in this? Where do they fit in the division? Because I think Seaholm, Royal Oak, and Troy are right now better than them. I think they're better than Groves. I think if there's the only team that I think they're better at right now is Bloopy Hills. So I think right now when I look at Troy, you know, when I look at Groves, um, you know, those are going to be the three teams they're going to catch up. They're going to try to catch up to. And not to mention what the districts being just came out. Um, you got Seaholm in that district over at Birmingham, Marion. Um, and Marion's looking for a new coach. Um, because Michelle Lindsay stepped down. So I'm curious to see who gets named the new head coach over there at Birmingham, Marion. But they host the district. And you have Seaholm there. Bloopia Hills is going to be there. A&T is going to be there, which is... That's going to be just absolutely vicious, especially because when you look at A&T, they're probably going to be one of the favorites in the blue. I still don't trust them defensively. Um, they're in that district. Um, and, then there's, and then there's Groves. So, there's going to be some questions. <laughs> there's some questions when I look at the district. I mean, there's going to be some questions when I look at it. But my thoughts on Dubla, um, there has to be, she's got the pedigree to be a coach. She's got the pedigree. She was a JV coach at Lakeland, was an assistant at Lakeland, um, coach at OCC, was an assistant for three years. Um, the playing experience, that says a lot. Um, so... This is going to be, and also, let's not forget, Groves has a new athletic director in there. So, basically, you know, it's, it's a whole new system over there. So, I'm going to be curious to see how this works. Because <laughs> there has to be a transition period. Dealing with it. But there has to be a transition period that has to happen during the year. And, and Dublin's system is completely different from Heidi's system. So there has to be that transition period, but it has to happen during the year. That's what I always say to new coaches who take over at new schools. There has to be that transition period. Has to happen during the year. 
And everybody experiences it. They experience it. So that's going to be the key, I think, for Dubla is can she, you know, get on the same page with her players and can the players get on the same page with her? If they do, I think Groves can be in line for a good year. I really do. But the question mark that I have with Groves is can the Falcons, you know, my question with her is can the Falcons, um, can the Falcons handle the, um, you know, the new division change? Obviously, you look at Troy in the division now. You got Royal Oak in there. And then you got, um, you know, Sea Home, obviously, your arch rival. Um, it's going to be a challenge for Groves. I really do. Um, under Dubla. Um, but the question is, what experience are you going to bring from Lakeland? What are you going to bring from OCC? Um, and put it in the Groves' system. That's going to be the challenge. That's going to be the key. So it'll be really interesting to see how this one goes. Um, with Groves as we head into the um, end of the season. So we'll see what happens as we go forward there. Um, we're going to break down. We're going to start breaking down. Um, speaking of basketball, we're going to start breaking down some of these districts early indications. Of course, I will have a longer article on the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at com. Also, volleyball came out as well. So we'll, we're going to look at, we're gonna. I'm going to focus on basketball next week. Um, when it comes to the, um, when it comes to the, um, when it comes to districts, but cause they just released the, um, basketball. I mean, they just released all the districts for, um, I mean, cross country. They also released volleyball. Um, so we're going to go volleyball here first. I mean, like, and then we're going to, I'm going to leave basketball for their own segment. I mean, like, which is going to be interesting heading into next week. Um, hoping to have, um, hoping to have some guests here, um, we're going to break these districts down, obviously. But, um, you know, we're going to go with volleyball here um, to start, um, you know, here for the um, for the um, remaining minutes here of the podcast here. Um, we're going to start off with district number 22. This will be at, um, actually, district number um, 23. This will be at Farm Tales Mercy. Farmington's in here along with Oak Park and A&T. Um, they're, I mean, like, they're going to be in a district with Detroit Mumper, Detroit Renaissance. Um, and Farm Tales Mercy. Um, I don't really see, early indications here. I, I just don't see anybody how anybody in this district is going to knock off Farm Tales Mercy from their, um, knocking off Farm Tales Mercy because I'm expecting Farmington is going to be okay, but I don't think they're going to be as good as you think they will be. A&T and Oak Park, both teams have struggled, um, mightily. So I just don't think that anybody in this district, though, is going to touch Farm Tales Mercy in that district. Um, district 25 at Lakeland. Um, you got um, West Bloomfield's in here. Um, you add South Lion, Wall Lake Central, Wall Lake Northern, Wall Lake Western, and Lakeland in here. Um, this could be competitive. I mean, I think this could be really competitive. Um, you know, especially Wall Lake Northern. Um, I think Western's got some experience coming back. So does Wall Lake Central. South Lions got some experience coming back. Um, Lakeland, we know, was young last year, but they got some experience coming back. Um, and West Bloomfield, um, curious to see how they're going to look. I mean, really curious to see how this team is going to really look. And, you know, it'd be interesting, but if I had to give an early favorite in this district, I would have to say Lakeland has the favorite because of home court. Um... And I think that's that's the early indication right there. Um, District 26 at Holly, you got Clarkson, Lake Orion, Oxford, along with Holly, Waterford, Cuttering, Waterford, Mott. Um, I think this is a three-team district. I, I think this is going to be a three-teamer between. I mean, Oxford, it's hard for me to trust Oxford, especially with what they've been through in volleyball. Um, Lake Orion, we know, has been very inconsistent. Um, under Coach Tony Scarvato lately. Um, but then the favorite has to be Clarkson, considering who they got back. Um, well coached as well. Um, it'll be 
interesting to see. I don't see really anybody in this district touching Clarkston. Lake Ori might have the best chance, but it's going to be a tall order considering, you know, you really look at, um, you know, the success, the long-term success that Clarkson's had. Um, you got to give them the edge early on this district. Um, you got to get the edge to Clarkston in this, in that district. District 27, this is going to be really interesting. This is a doozy of a volleyball district. You got Avondale, Bloomfield Hills, Orchard Lake, St. Mary's coming from D2 to D1. Um, had a really nice volleyball year last year. Um, I think they had a deep postseason run. Then you have all three Rochester schools. You have Rochester, you have Adams and Stony Creek. Um, this is a gonna this is gonna be a tough district. This is gonna be a really, really, really tough district. Because a lot of the teams here, I mean, Bloomfield Hills has had a ton of success. You look at Rochester, they've had a nice year last year. Adams, new coach, and Nancy McCollin taking over that team. Um Stony Creek, well coached under Coach Ross Talbot. Um this is going to be, it's at Rochester, which helps for Rochester, but it's going to be a really difficult district, I think, for um, for um, whoever wins this district, I think is going to really earn it because of, one, look at the teams in this district. You look at Bloomfield Hills, who's had success. You look at Orchard Lake St. Mary's, they've had a ton of success. You know, and they're, you know, Rochester, we know they've been up and down. Adams, you know, they've had a lot of success as well. And then Stony Creek, um, well coached under Coach Ross Talbot. Um, it'll be really interesting to see how this is going to be a tough district. It's going to be a really, really, these six teams in this district, they're going to be really, really competitive. So we'll see what happens in there. We're going to really, really see what happens. But District 27, when I look at that district, looks loaded. It is loaded. District 28, this is at Berkeley. Um, you got Berkeley, Grove, Seaholm, Birmingham, Marion, North Farnton, Royal Oak. Uh, Birmingham, Marion has to be a favorite here. Um, a lot of experience coming back. Well coached. Um, we know the history. I mean, they. I think they're the back. To, I think they're the defending state champions again. Um, Berkeley's been a, a proven program. Groves and Seaholm. Groves. You know, it's been up and down lately. Seahome's been a well-proven program under Coach Heather Lippert or Heather Gambone. Um, North Farmington, it's been up and down. Um, Royal Oak, same thing. But when I look at that district in um, at Berkeley, I just think early indications. I don't really see how anybody can beat Birmingham Marion. Um, now, it's going to take a heck of a team to knock them off. I mean... Albeit, I think Berkeley's got a chance, but they've been, you know, we'll see what happens. I mean, Berkeley, they got a shot, I think, to do well here, being at home, but having to deal with Birmingham Marion. For Berkeley, it's like, it's almost similar to having to deal with Detroit Renaissance in your district for basketball. But now you pick up Birmingham Marion, and you get to say, oh my God, what? What have we done to bring a Catholic League team to our district? It doesn't work that way in basketball now for them. I think it got, I think gonna be I think that should be that'll be a really interesting district in basketball. Um, but volleyball, seeing Birmingham Marion in your district, you just kind of just want to go like, what, what am I doing? What are you doing? So we'll see, we'll see what happens there. But tough district for volleyball for um. Berkeley, Grove, Seaholm, Birmingham Marion's in there, um, North Farns and Royal Oak. I mean, that'd be a really, really tall order there in that district. District 31 at Utica Eisenhower. Um, you got Troy, Troy Athens, Sterling Heights, Stevenson, Utica, Utica Eisenhower, and you can afford two. Um, this could be an interesting district. I think Troy's got a chance in this district. But Utica Eisenhower. <laughs> They're they're a scary team, and being in the and there's an advantage for all four Utica schools for a reason, because their gym size is similar. Their gym size is similar um, than Detroit Troy Athens 
because of, you know, I mean, I think that familiarity of Jim, that could be a problem for Troy and Troy Athens in this district. I don't really think that could be a problem. Now, for Troy's case, Troy's got experience. Athens, they got some experience. But Utica Eisenhower is a favorite for a reason. They are the favorite in this in this district for a reason. And we'll see how it goes. We'll see how that goes. I'm just looking at District 32 now. It's not an OA area, but my goodness, look at the how tough that district's gonna be. Maco at Port Huron. You know, Macomb, Dakota. You got New Baltimore, Anchor Bay, and Romeo in there. All three proven viable powers. All in that district. How is no, there's no words. No words to explain it. That district's gonna be difficult. Really, really difficult. So we'll see how that one goes. I mean, but the District 32 at Port Huron, I know it's not in the OAA, but looking at those teams in that in that district, oh boy. <laughs> oh Nelly. Let's go to di div di di the division two here. Um my goodness, my words are just off today. I don't know why. Um just a lot of the news that has came out today. Um, District 59. This will be at um, Pontiac Notre Dame Prep. Um, you got Bloopy Hills, Cranbrook, Kingswood, Birmingham, Detroit, Country Day, Pontiac, Pontiac Notre Dame Preparatory, and um, Waterford Oakside Prep. Now, Waterford Oakside Prep um, been a recent recent new school. Um, don't know much history with them. I don't know much about them. Um, look to get more on them, but I know a lot about Birmingham, Detroit, Country Day. And they're a scary team. But also Pontiac Notre Dame Preparatory under Coach Becky Wardle, the athletic director over there. They're well coached over there. Them and Notre Dame Prep, them and Detroit Country Day could be really interesting. That could be interesting. Because you look at Pontiac Notre Dame Prep. They had... They won their district with these, but then had an issue in the regional when they ran into North Branch. There's a possibility they could clash with North Branch again. They could clash with them. So, knowing the motivation for Notre Dame Prep, that's going to be their motivation. Now, for Pontiac's case here in this, in this, in this um, district, I don't see how they're going to handle this district pretty well. Now, they, they do have a chance against um, Waterford Oakside Prep. They do have a chance against Cranbrook Kingswood. Country Day and Notre Dame Prep, I think it's going to be really, really tough handles for them. I think it's going to be really, really tough. So, like I said, I mean, it's going to be a challenge for them. We're going to see what happens there. We're going to see what happens. We're going to see what happens. Um, District number... Um, District number 57, this is over at St. Clair Shore, Salt Lake. Um, you got, you got um, East Point, Harper Woods is in here, Harper Woods Chandler Park Academy, St. Clair Shore, Salt Lake, and Warren Lincoln. Um, this is also about the same district in um, basketball, except um, center line joins um, on the girls' side for girls' basketball. Um, other than that, all, the four teams are the same. And then the boys' side, obviously, you add center line into this. So, for Harper, I mean, Harper Woods has got a chance here. St. Clair Shore South Lake's a tough team. They're going to be tough. I mean, they're going to be tough. But Harper Woods, they got a chance here. They got a chance, especially being in the league they're in. <coughs> Excuse me. I think being in the league that Harper Woods is in gives them a chance to win this district. I think they got a good chance here to win this one. It's a little bit of a travel for them heading in St. Clair Shore South Lake. Um, but it'll be interesting to see how this one goes. Really, really interesting to see how this one goes in St. Clair Shores. And then last but not least, district number 54. This will be at Detroit Henry Ford in Detroit. Um, you got Ferndale, Ferndale University. Um, Detroit Henry Ford, Detroit Jalen Rose Leadership Academy, Detroit Lake King Academy, and Detroit Old Redford. Um, when I look at this district here, early indications, I think this is Ferndale or Ferndale University's chance, I think, to win this district. 
Ferndale's had... Now, Ferndale, Ferndale University's case, they've had a deal with Birmingham Detroit Country Day the last few years. That's difficult. Really difficult. So, for them, I think this is a little bit of an easier district for them. Now, Detroit Old Redford, Detroit Lincoln King, Detroit Jalen Rose Leadership Academy, um, not that impressive at all. I, I just don't think they're that impressive or they scare me. Um, that I think, honestly, I don't see how they're going to challenge um, Ferndale or Ferndale University. I think, I think this district here has a great opportunity here for Ferndale and Ferndale U to do some significant damage. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But for Ferndale and Ferndale University, avoiding Birmingham and Troy Country Day, that's huge. Um, with them, with setting the Troy Country Day North, that's going to be huge for them. Um, so we'll see what happens going forward. We're going to see what happens going forward. I'll have more coverage on the volleyball districts on the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. We're going to also talk more of the basketball districts as well. Um, heading into the, head, as we head into the summer as well, there, I'm also going to send a, um, a column on both the basketball districts on the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. Um, previewing the districts, looking at, looking at the, um, analytics of these districts and we'll go from there. And also how the, um, the new rules, particularly in basketball, um, impacts, especially with seating um, going forward there. So everything, the basketball districts, the volleyball districts, they're all going to be on the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. We'll also have coaches um, call in during the, um, during, the, during the summer months to talk to basketball districts, obviously. Um, so we'll see what happens, and we'll go forward from there. Remember, to sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. With best of luck to um, Rochester Adams um, competing in the girls' soccer state semifinals. Um, and and if they get there, I'm in the state final this weekend at Michigan State. Lake Orion, uh, best of luck to them if they take on Lakeland in the state quarterfinals. If they get there, either they'll get the winner of South Lion or Heartland. And if they get the state final, most likely Clash of Fire Shields Mercy um, in the state finals over at Michigan State. So we're getting close to the end. Um, of the state, um, of the state, um, of the state tournament, um, golf recap, obviously, um, go boys golf recap here. Obviously we're going to look at them here before we sign on off here. Um, when you look at boys golf, um, when you look at boys golf, um, I mean like they had, it was an interesting weekend. Of course, nobody Detroit Catholic central won the, um, they won the state title. Um, in um division one. Um Rochester Adam, I mean like um Bloomby Hills was six. Um Lake Warrior will tie for sevens. Um, um and um just looking at these standings now. Um you know so um nobody Detroit Adams was third. Um nobody Detroit Catholic Central ended up winning it. So Adams had a nice year. Lake Orion and Booby Hills all had nice years this year in golf. Um, so we'll see what happens going forward um, from the team title standpoint. Um, but that was the results that came this weekend over in the um, in golf. I mean, like Booby Hills took um, six, Lake Orion tied for seventh. Adams took third in the um, state finals in golf. So. A lot to be proud of, um, you know, with the OA this season. So we'll see what happens. Um, hang in the final week of the season. All right, man, I'm signing off here. Take care. God bless. And I will see you all next week, everybody. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you then. See you next week. And God bless. Them.